In the opening scene of Act 5, Hamlet and Horatio encounter a gravedigger. This scene serves to expand upon the motif of death and mortality, as both Hamlet and the gravedigger provide some interesting takes on the idea of our existence. Later, he witnesses Ophelia's funeral. I poured a flagon of Rhenish on me at once. This same skull, sir, was uh, Yorick's skull, the king's jester. This, Eaten that. Let me see. Alas, poor Yorick. I knew him, Horatio. A fellow of infinite jest, of most excellent fancy. He had borne me on his back a thousand times. Now, how abhorred in my imagination it is. My gorge rises at it. Here hung those lips that I have kissed I know not how oft. Where be your jibes now? Your gambols, your songs, your flashes of merriment that were wont to set the table on a roar. Not one now to mock your own grinning. Quite chap fallen. Now get you to my lady's chamber and tell her, let her paint an inch thick, to this favour she must come. Make her laugh at that. Pretty Horatio, tell me one thing. What's that, my lord? Dost thou think Alexander looked to this fashion of the earth? Even so. And smelt so? <laughs> Even so, my lord. To what base uses we may return, Horatio. Why, may not imagination trace the noble dust of Alexander till I find it stopping a bunghole? To to consider too curiously to consider, sir. No, faith, not a jot. But to follow him thither with modesty enough and likelihood to lead it, as thus. Alexander died. Alexander was buried. Alexander returneth to dust. The dust is earth. Of earth we make loam. And why of that loam whereto he was converted might they not stop a beer barrel? Imperious Caesar, dead and turned to clay, might stop a hole to keep the wind away. Oh, that that earth which kept the world in awe should patch a wall to expel the winter's floor. This is developing the theme of mortality, how after death, who we are while living is meaningless. No one is above death. It is a fate we all receive, and Hamlet states, quote, Alexander died. Alexander was buried. He essentially is saying, that even one as great as Alexander met the same fate as everyone else. This connects to his melancholic state and how he has trouble finding meaning in life. Essentially, if we all die, what's the point of action in life? How came he mad? Very strangely, they say. How strangely? Faith, even with losing his wits. Upon what ground? But well, here, in Denmark. I've been sexton here, man and boy, 30 years. In this encounter, the gravedigger states that it has been 30 years since the birth of Hamlet. What is he whose grief bears such an emphasis? Whose phrase of sorrow conjures the wandering stars and makes them stand like wonder-wounded hearers? This is I, Hamlet the Dane. The devil take thy soul! Thou prayest not well! I prithee take thy fingers from my throat, for though I am not splenative and rash, yet have I in me something dangerous which let thy wisdom fear hold off thy hand! Lakshma Sunder! Hamlet! Hamlet! Good, my lord, be quiet! Quiet. Why, I will fight with him upon this theme until my eyelids will no longer wag. Oh, my son, what's he? I loved Ophelia! Oh. Forty thousand brothers could not with all their quantity of love make up my sum. What wilt thou do for her? Oh, he is mad, Laertes. The love of God forbear him! Soon show me what thou would do. <sighs> would weep, would fight, would fast, would tear thyself, would drink a bisel, eat a crocodile. Oh. I'll do it! Dost thou come here to whine, to outface me with leaping in her grave? Be buried quick with her, and so will I. And if thou prate of mountains, let them throw millions of acres on us, till our ground, singeing his pate against the burning zone, make Ossa like a wart. Nay, and thou'lt mouth, I'll rant as well as thou. Here we have Hamlet bursting with emotion after learning of Ophelia's death. This display of anger and grief lies not within his antic disposition. This is his true, unrestrained emotions. 
This shows that he is not truly mad, as he admits to be full of emotion. Quote, 40,000 brothers could not with all their quantity of love make up my sum. Hamlet goes on to say that whatever someone else could possibly do, he will outdo them. This is a display of his deep emotional connection that he had for Ophelia, and shows just how much he cares for those who are close to him, such as King Hamlet. In this final scene, soon after Ophelia's burial, Hamlet explains to Horatio how he had been ordered to death by the Danish court, and he had tampered with the letter so that Rosencrantz and Guildenstern would be killed. Soon after, Osric appears notifying Hamlet of Laertes' challenge, and Hamlet accepts it. Venom to thy work. <laughs> oh, yet defend me, friends. I am but hurt. Thou incestuous, murderous, damned dame. Drink off this potion. Is thy union here? Follow my mother. <laughs> <laughs> He is justly served. It is a poison tempered by himself. Exchange forgiveness with me, noble Hamlet. Mine and my father's death come not upon thee, nor thine on me. Never should have come here. Pretty good order. Not bad. Next time won't be so easy. You might just make it. But for now, you're still a wealth to us, new blood. So you do what we tell you. Here's my sword. Go take it up to your and have it shot. And be careful. It's probably worth more than you are. Over here. You're outmatched. <laughs> This is key in displaying the theme of deception. The act of lying has come back to haunt those characters who chose to do so. Laertes then forgives Hamlet for the deaths of his father and sister, acknowledging the true guilt of Claudius, thus allowing Hamlet to pass to heaven. Heaven make thee free of it. Oh, I follow thee. I am dead, Horatio. Wretched queen and you, you that look pale and tremble at this chance, that are but mutes or audience to this act, had I but time, as this fell sergeant death is strict in his arrest, oh, I could tell you, but let it be, Horatio, I am dead, thou livest. Report me and my cause arise to the unsatisfied. Never believe it. I am more an antique Roman than a Dane. Is yet some liquor left. Is the other man give me the cup? Let go. <coughs> By heaven, I'll hat. <coughs> oh, God, Horatio. What a wounded name. Things standing thus unknown shall live behind me. If thou didst ever hold me in thy heart, absent thee from felicity a while, and in this harsh world, draw thy breath in pain to tell my story. What warlike noise is this? Young Fortinbras, with conquest come from Poland, to the ambassadors of England gives this warlike volley. Oh. I die, Horatia. The potent poison quite outgrows my spirit. I cannot live to hear the news from England, but I do prophesy the election lights on Fortinbras. He has my dying voice. So tell him, with the occurrence more and less, which have solicited. The rest is silence. Now cracks a noble heart. Good night, sweet prince, and flights of angels sing thee to thy rest. Hamlet, now aware of his approaching demise, urges Horatio to tell everyone his story, contrasting his statement about who he was in life did not really matter. Ironically, 
Fortinbras orders for Hamlet to receive a soldier's burial. Hamlet was not a soldier, but rather a scholar. This goes against Hamlet's wishes for the people to know who he was and the reasons behind his actions, concluding the tragedy.